Hello friends and welcome to my tips and tricks and game analysis follow-up from my tree and protector guide. You can check it out, I'll link it in the description. But this is just a follow-up. We are gonna go into game analysis after this. Uh, but to start us off, I want to talk about the draft a little bit. Heroes you like to play with and against uh, and don't like. Um, so anyone, let's start with uh, heroes you don't like on the enemy team. Dispels are pretty annoying, so like Abaddon, Legion Commander, in the laning stage you just don't get a lot of value out of Leech Seed, and then later on in the game, either Leech Seed or your ultimate can easily be removed, and that's just a pain. It's it's workable, you're going to play that matchup, it's not the end of the world, but you're just going to have to be a little careful of it, um, and you're just not going to feel as good as you do in other matchups. Anyone who can hunt you down in trees is also annoying, so people like Beastmaster with the Hawk and the axis to cut trees. Uh, Bat Rider, I think, is one of the most annoying matchups. Um, he can just like chase you down. He has damage over time that prevents, uh, it breaks your passive. So if you're in the trees, you can never leave to like fight because your passive instantly breaks. So you're stuck in the trees or you can't get back in the trees because your passive's broken for a long period of time. So Bat Rider is really annoying. Zeus, uh, people always counterpick Timbersaw. I don't think it's the end of the world though. You probably do have to give up your first tower, but after that you can cut the creep waves behind Timbersaw as he pushes into your tier two. Uh, along that line, people who take towers super fast are annoying. Um, so Beastmaster uh, is a, a good example. Death Prophet, you can't out heal really fast tower damage. So you prefer strong enemy laners who kick you out of the lane typically, but you don't get kicked out of the lane because you get to play in the trees. And then they're not actually that fast at taking tower. So you keep healing it and you keep cutting creep waves or killing them under tower with your nature's grasp. And you really delay out the game that way. But when they can just like, 100 to zero the tower in like 30 seconds there's not much you can do about that and I, you can still play the game but it's just annoying throughout the game but especially in the laning stage you do not like dealing with attack slows move slows or damage over time because they just really counter a lot about your hero uh, they make your passive very difficult to play around because it always breaks every time you leave the trees and then all your high damage right you're just like you're slowly getting there because your attack speed's already bad and you're already slow. So when you're affected by either of those things, it's a real struggle. So um, a hero like Crystal Maiden and uh, Jakiro, they can actually be pretty effective against uh, Tree and Protector. Phoenix, oh man, you never even attack against a Phoenix. Extremely mobile heroes are also a bit of a pain. So people like Storm Spirit, Void Spirit, Puck, uh, Slark. You have an ultimate that roots. So in that sense, that's good but it's, it's not fast, it's not really reliable. You need other people to catch them. So Treant, although he can be an initiator, counter initiator, you don't see Treant and like, oh, thank goodness, that's enough lockdown for our team, let's all pick damage, right? You still need other heroes to do that. And so as a Treant player, it's a lot easier when it's just um, you know the usual run around, uh, maybe fast, maybe slow, heroes like Ursa, that's a lot easier to handle than people who are like flying around, blinking, people you can miss your ult on and who can just like go through your slows, that's annoying. Uh, so that, that, that applies to the game, but also in the laning stage. So people against like Weaver or Faceless Void or um, Ricky, all of these heroes are kind of annoying because the way you apply a lot of pressure in the laning stage is by slowing and then you need to stay near them to get the heal from your Leech Seed. And so you throw these spells on them and then they just like jump away and you're like, well, okay, just kind of threw out all these spells and got nothing. Uh, so those are annoying to play against. You are not great against magic burst, but slow AOE magic you're good against because Leech Seed, you kind of counteract that damage and physical damage you're really good against because of the bonus armor. But if the enemy has a purge, then you have to be careful of that. Uh, because you can have your living armor removed. In the laning stage, you like to play against heroes who are low armor and don't have any kind of escape. So people like Pudge, uh, you can just like punch them down, whittle, and then eventually go for a kill by applying a ton of slows and they just have to like slowly walk through it. Uh, you like those kind of matchups. People who aren't super high burst because you don't like those 100 to zero fights typically. You like more like poke, 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 and we're still really healthy. Now you're really low and now we can go for a kill. Uh, so anyone who's like mobile, who has like high burst, eh, not such a fan of those matchups. Heroes who have natural spell immunity as well, like uh, Lifestealer and Juggernaut, Pangolier, you are good against them because you can uh, pierce their ultimates or pierce their spell immunity and it forces them to buy another form of dispel or just deal with your ult, which is, you know, very annoying for them and free for you. So that's great. Uh, you like any of the big 
cancelable channel spells. So like Enigma, you're pretty good against. Buy a Blink against him, and there's there's nothing he can do. He can buy BKB and Lincolns, and you can always Blink Alt Cancel as long as you're not caught in it. Um, so other other big ults that are channels um, you can deal with as well. For your lane, aggressive combos are best. Uh, now sometimes that depends on the matchup. So some heroes can't always be aggressive, but people like Slark. Monkey King, Drow, Lina, uh, Arc Warden's actually one of the best combos with Treant. Uh, these are all uh, aggressive potential heroes who can combo with your slows and will play with you. I don't enjoy playing with like slow farmers like Alchemist and Spectre, but Treant can actually work with it because you can just change up your build, do more healing and living armor, and just help them get through the laning stage, survive, play very defensive, focus more on pulls and stacks. So I actually like Treant for that because uh, the carries, you know, you get all kinds of carries. So I think you just adapt your build and you can fit many laning stage. You're always a strong laning presence, but whether that's aggressive or defensive, you know, it kind of depends. So really I'm I'm up to play with just about any carry, but anyone who breaks my trees um, is not going to be fun. Uh, so like mainly nature's profit as a carry, uh, not a fan of that. Uh, it's, it's just a little awkward. Laning with a timber saw is really awkward. Uh, Primal Beast, Beastmaster. Mars is okay until eventually he gets Arena. He breaks all your trees. Um, so you can work with a lot of people, but my, my preference is aggressive lane partners. Okay, that's about it. Uh, I may have forgotten someone, but if you have a particular question, just leave a comment and I'll, I'll do my best to answer. In this lane, I went Orb of Venom because I think Drow Slow plus my slows, uh, the W and the Q are pretty strong. Spirit Breaker can be annoying, uh, but I felt like... A couple points in Leech Seed, we can kind of tank through their damage and then win fights that way, especially if I draw the attention to myself rather than let it be on Drow. Uh, so that was kind of my plan for this laning stage. I've got the Mango so that I can cast my spells. See how I like harass in the trees? You want to make sure you do this when you play Treant as well. Um, now if they like fight back at any point, I can just turn around. My passive won't break because I'm in the trees right now. Uh, so this allows you to avoid them like... A typical melee here is you walk up and attack, and as you run away, they can hit you once or twice. As Treant, uh, you can always attack like this, and anytime a trade does not go well for you, you can back out. And if the enemy has like slow reactions, and they don't really like see you step out of the trees to punch them, and they're not reacting fast enough, you can already be walking back into the trees, then they can't see you and target you. Uh, so it's typically the safer way to harass. They actually both, uh, or Mars has the Quelling Blade and is breaking it, he just bashed me and broke some trees. Um, but anytime you harass and even hit creeps as much as possible, you want to stand in the trees. In this case, you know, a little harder. Some people will do this. It's one of the best ways to counter Treant, in my opinion. Then when you have a chance, just hit your own creeps like this. Uh, if you can't go out too far, uh, it's just really safe to do. Like, uh, usually you can go for these kind of range and eyes, but Mars with the, uh, the God's Rebuke has a good way of securing them. Uh, knocking me back from it too. But like, otherwise, 91 damage, super high. So... Right now, I'm kind of hoping for him to walk in to go for last hit so I can punch him. Now you can see here, you know, just the same usual uh, harass Spirit Breaker in the trees. These bashes are kind of annoying. You don't usually have to deal with that kind of stuff. And anytime they walk too far, you can just hit your own creeps to try to keep equilibrium in this area. Because the further out it goes, the harder it gets uh, for you to run people down. Uh, if it's in this area and you start playing aggressive, you have more of the lane to like throw out your nature's grasp, run them down with the slows and punch them. When it's by their tower, it's very hard to do any of that. And then because you're kind of slow and we're not really buying move speed unless you do, like you get the wind lace, um, then it's hard to like come back and do this pull or this one's okay. But um, because you're so slow walking out of trees, you don't want to have to come back here if possible. And so hitting your own creeps, you add so much damage, you can oftentimes help balance the lane here. And then I think I think I wanted to go unblock the camp, but they started going on Drow. So I ended up leveling up Living Armor. I wanted to go QW to, uh, to fight. And then here, okay, you see this trick? Rather than like stand still and attack Mars, uh, you can do that. It kind of depends on the situation. But these trees are like singular paths. So something you can do as Treant is you walk through the trees. So you want to try to like get in front of the enemy kind of like this. In this case, I just killed him because he was low. But you see how like I cut through here and now I can stand in this way and now he can't get through here. And then he's going to have to like go back this way. And if you ever played like a tower defense game where you can change the 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 maze, like all you do as Treant is then you walk back over here and you block him again. And then he tries to go the other way and you walk through the tree and you block him there. And you just have to be careful that you stay in the tree so that your passive doesn't break and you can keep doing this. Um, 
But especially if you have a ranged hero, you mainly just need to provide vision. And if you ever stand still and attack in the tree line, it gets really tough. So you want to try to like walk through the trees, cut them off, and then you can hit them when they're like stuck uh, behind you. Uh, but the whole time, hopefully you're providing sight for your carries to hit, and then you can get kills like this. Or even if it's not a kill, just like get really good harass. There's other parts to do this. Um, so here, right, uh, sometimes you're chasing through here instead of trying to hit them. You can try to like walk through. Uh, but this tends to apply mostly through here. But a really sick one is when uh, you're like in this tree line, like say you're the uh, four position and the five like walks out here, you can then like fill in the path. Same over here. Like the, the five is trying to walk through here. The trees are broken now, but you can like path through the trees and stand in front of them and then get them stuck. You can do this kind of exchange quite a lot where you just peek your head out to see where the enemy support is. And you can choose whether you walk out or not here because Mars is a little further away and he's low. I decide to actually break out of the trees and commit and try to, well, I didn't really think I'd kill him, but I figured I could like run him out of the lane and then it would be 2v1 versus Mars and we go on him next. Uh, but sometimes you like stick your head out and you're like, whoa, I don't want to do this. And then it's fine. You just turn around. You just have to be careful that they don't have a way to like pull you out of the trees uh, like Pudge or Marcy Dispose. That's a dangerous one. If they have that, then you have to be like extra careful of how you're showing. But it's not like that much different than compared to a normal support who can't walk through the trees. So just keep that in mind if you ever have to deal with that. Yeah, here's another example where I should just be trying to like cut through here because I know Mars wants to break vision with the trees and then like go through this path. So my pathing actually is not great here. I should have just like run straight across and get in his way. And then if I had, you see how this path is like singular, um, single pathway. So if I stand in here first, then he's gonna have to turn around and go another way. Unless he has like tangos and quelling blades and cut through the trees. But a lot of times people panic. They're like, why can't I go through, right? And then the pathing is screwing them over because they're like clicking here, but the hero's turning around. They're like, that's not what I wanna do. Uh, so I should have done that. Could have uh, maybe killed the Mars. If not, at least just get a lot better damage in. If you ever need to respond to a gank, try to cast living armor first. Uh, since once you start channeling the TP, you can't cast it and you might just watch him die. So if you can, cast Living Armor and then start the teleport. This is maybe not the best example of this, but when you do end up shoving your lane out for whatever reason, possibly because of Leech Seed, possibly because of Nature's Grass, possibly because your carry just does it for no reason, then this is the kind of hard pull I'm talking about. Uh, like, like I said, not the best example because they're kind of pretty far up, but you can try to like intercept them here usually, or sometimes they fight here and you can bring it in as the last creep dies, which is kind of what I'm trying to do here, which uh, I pick up the range creep and uh, because the enemies are so close, it doesn't quite work. But sometimes uh, when you do get this to work and you probably do it a little lower, the, the creeps come over here and they'll try to fight. And that's a really good time to commit because they're literally drawing creep aggro to try to prevent this. So it's a good time to throw out your slows and fight, even though it's right in front of the tower. Uh, so that's the part where maybe you don't full commit. It kind of depends on the situation if you think you can get the kill, uh, but that can be a good time to fight. Otherwise, if it does succeed, pulls it back here and then they run into like this area, then it becomes a lot easier to fight where you can throw out leech seed or if you want to contest this safely you like throw out uh, nature's grass kind of like in this angle which allows you to you know damage the camp so you're contesting it uh, but also kind of putting your nature's grasp in a very annoying position for them where they have to like walk through it through this area to get to this uh, camp and then whenever you see the four kind of go away like this uh, Treant can sometimes gank just by walking through the tree line, which can surprise a lot of offlaners. So once you see him doing something like this, you want to kind of go through the trees to get uh, behind him so you can start just dropping the slows. Try to leech seed first. It makes it, makes it easier to land the nature's grasp because sometimes, uh, I mean, if they're literally just full speed, they have a better time dodging the nature's grasp. But you can slow leech seed, and then the leech seed, you get the full value, the full slow on. You can kind of see what path they're taking now that they're like in retreat mode, and then you can throw the nature's grasp. Sometimes you try to like start with nature's grasp, but they change paths randomly, and then it's like, it's awkward, nature's grasp does nothing. So you might have seen some of these clips in the video, but uh, you're fine to rotate into fights. In this case, I didn't have living armor, but again, if you can living armor your target before teleporting in, that's good. Try to buy them time before you get there, help them survive the gank. When these kind of situations happen, you do want to try to get Leech Seed down pretty quickly so that you can start getting the heal going for your team as people take damage because it's not an instant heal. It's going to take some time. So I would try to, again, spam out Leech Seed first. Uh, maybe it won't always be the case. I'm sure there are instances where you don't want to. Uh, but usually uh, you want that heal going because it takes five seconds to get the full heal for your team. And a lot of early fights will last that long. 
So you you just want to make sure you're not waiting too long, and then like you know a hero dies before they really get that to uh, that full heal from Leech Seed. If you end up defending towers like this, uh, you do want to be careful against heroes who can break your trees. So this is Arena. Uh, you can see how dangerous that can be. So sometimes you have to like throw out your Nature's Grasp and then run away like way further back. This angle's okay. You'll see I'm hitting all the creeps and I'm touching the tree. A nicer one is usually like somewhere in this area, and you throw out the Nature's Grasp like this. Because uh, the melee creeps tend to clump around the tower and then the range creeps over there. So you'd like to try to hit all of them and get them killed. And you kind of want them to come in. Because otherwise, uh, sometimes you like throw out the nature's grasp. Like, let's say the creeps are meeting over here. If you throw out the nature's grasp in that angle, once your creeps die, they're going to like push in. Especially if the enemy kills your creeps. Um, so if the enemy's not there, then you can do this kind of like... Uh, perpendicular angle but if the enemy are here pushing in the wave but you want to start damaging the creep wave anyways you need to put it in an angle that the creeps are going to kill yours and then push in and they're going to be in nature's grasp the whole time so it's usually something like this um, but more to the right a little bit like through this angle um, but we might find an example later do as I say not as I do so like this angle not the best we are hitting most of the creeps but when Mars clears out this creep wave really quickly kind of like this this can still work. You can stick your head out here. Let's see if I do it, actually. Yeah, okay. I, I'm kind of doing it, but actually also not that much because I'm scared. But you can stick your head out and have them aggro to you to keep them in nature's grasp. But that naturally presents more risk because you're like, hey, here I am, right? If you want to kill me, you know, it's I'm right here. So if you have to be really careful, I recommend you do a more, like, angled path like this. Um, but it just depends if you think, you know, how much risk you're at. And then when you're not doing anything, don't stand out of the trees. You see I'm like deep in the trees. I should probably be more under the tower here. I don't know I'm being charged, but uh, if you are being charged or anyone wants to jump on you back here, it's a lot easier for you. You know where you are, but they don't know where you are unless they're charging, I guess. Uh, but you can always just like move through the trees this way or this way, uh, drop your ult because you don't need to see them. Uh, fog of war is fine. You can hit them, but you won't hit invisible units, uh, smoked units. Actually, you can't hit them anyways. Like you'd break smoke being that close. Um, but like invisible units, uh, Slark ult, I'm trying to think what else. Those are like the, the two main examples. You can't hit those with your ult, but the rest of them, as they try to dive you under tower, you can ult, you can throw out the nature's grass through this path. This, this angle is a lot better. Um, and if the, the melee creeps kind of go to the tower on this side, actually, maybe it happens. Maybe I could just show you instead of explaining. I might be too scared. So you can see this angle, it's like not too bad. And then you can stick out and try to like aggro them into the tower. But it looks like my team actually showed up. So I just like ignored all that and came up. Um, that's a little bit forced from my team. A better response, or not better response, but like a more ideal situation is sometimes like they dive you as the treant and then you get to use overgrowth and nature's grasp. You're living in the trees with the armor and the leech seed, uh, dodging them around and then your team all like teleports in. That usually works out quite well, uh, especially in lower brackets when like that kind of like over, uh, over commitment happens a lot. Oh, otherwise you can, uh, you can go join your team, use your ult, and then come back to the tower. But you don't want to sit on your ult too long, so either you want your team to fight around that tower with your ult, or you want to go use it somewhere else and then go back to just like chilling and defending towers. Unless your team's active, then you can actually go do something with them. The mid lane's particularly easy because you always know these creeps are going to walk in. So you can throw out your uh, nature's grasp ahead of time and get back to safety. And he kind of like crushes these creeps a little too quickly, so maybe I could have saved it. But other heroes won't push as fast. And then a very common mistake from Triant Protector players is to always run out here and start getting last hits right away. You do want to be careful. As soon as you break your passive, you can die really easily. So you want to make sure it's safe before popping your head out. You're just a support, so if you don't get these last hits, it's not the end of the world. Getting the XP is already good enough. Um, but if you do eventually decide it's safe, try to aggro them to you and then stand by the trees. Uh, kind of like this. I took my sweet time in the middle. But you see, I should like pull them to the trees, aggro if you can, you know, go to another part of the lane, attack an enemy hero, then walk to the trees, pull them in towards you. Um, even if your creeps are here, as long as you can be in the trees, that is always going to be the safest for you. Sometimes you might be defending a lane or trying to push it out. Before you go, just throw out your nature's grasp or throw out a leech seed. As long as you hit like a couple creeps with either ability, it will push the lane in your favor. So you don't have to stay here the whole time to like hit it out. You can just throw your ability and then start rejoining your team. Uh, so that way, before you leave a lane, you know, it's pushing in your favor. That's always good to do. I mean, someone might come push it out like that Crystal Maiden did, but uh, at least uh, you kind of do your part, force them to do something as well. And then you'll see here, you're a melee hero, but you don't want to be up front in this area. Uh, well, <laughs> that kinda, that's kind of true 
for a lot of like high ground pushing. But I think that's a very common mistake uh, on Treant I see as well that, uh, you know, like heroes like Ogre and Undying, you're kind of more on the front lines, like, hey, come hit me. But Ogre, or, or sorry, not Ogre, Treant Protector, the guy we're here for, right? Because of this really powerful counter initiation, which you might've seen me talk about in that, that last video, um, this is, you know, you don't want to be in the front getting silenced, stunned up, and then you don't get to counter initiate. Counter initiating means you can't be the guy being killed. So uh, you want to like kind of wait in the back, play like a backline hero. You might see like Dazzles stand back here. It's very similar. We want to be able to throw out living armor, throw out a nicely angled nature's grasp, which is very hard to do from like right on the front. So you kind of just chill in the back. You see I'm like pretty close for like mech range as well. So I'll only have to step in for a little bit to start getting those abilities off. The Leech Seed is going to be a little harder to use. That's why the increase in cast range is pretty nice. Uh, you can try to throw out your Nature's Grasp preemptively just to like be annoying in a certain angle and try to like funnel them into one direction if you want, uh, or just keep them off the back while your carry is like hitting them over here. That can also work. But you see, I'm like not standing up here with them. I'm a little further back. Well, this is actually a little close, but um, from Drow, at least I'm farther back to make sure we can help out a bit more. I think we throw this fight coming up though. Let's see, what are we doing here? Kind of waiting for them to commit on her a bit. Oh, we get snowballed in? Oh, we're just kind of like diving actually. Oh, maybe this is fine though. Oh yeah, look at that. Great. When the creeps are about to spawn, get ready to like spam leech seed on them. Carries always like obliterate these creeps before you can like use them. Are we feeding? Oh, nice tusk save. I'm like reliving our own game through this. Let's go, we're winning. This time I'm playing a four Treant Protector. I chose a Ring of Protection because I think it's going to be harder to play aggressive. Legion, although she can, she's like a strong laner, but it's not super easy to just like run down and kill people. She will like be decent at trading and then eventually like get kills with duel. So that's kind of why I didn't go an Orb of Corrosion or sorry, uh, Orb of Venom. And I have a Ring of Protection because I think Lena's going to hit us a lot. And then I was thinking it's either Marcy support or Snapfire support. Turns out it is Marcy. Uh, but both of them are going to do a lot of like little right clicking that small fights are very likely to um, possibly happen, right? We're probably not going to see Cookie Lena in, but like Snapfire could jump on us, followed by Alina stun, uh, Marcy stun into Lena stun. So I wanted to be tanky enough to survive that. That's why I got the Ring of Protection this time. Uh, otherwise. Well, we'll see if we run into other games, but that's why I bought these these items. And now we're just gonna like punch our own creeps and get denies, and then do a little trades here and there when we can. Here you can kind of see, right? They're stunning me, they're attacking me, but it's not the end of the world because I have 18% physical resistance, which is not the best, but it's certainly better than your like 5% physical resistance without this ringer protection. So this is increasing my health by uh, probably over 10%. I'm a little late here, but sometimes, whether you're five or four, if you see people trying to pull, you can throw out Nature's Grasp to um, get in the way of it. I, I don't know why I waited so long to get here. Um, but like I think I should have cast it like further back here to try to uh, disrupt the centaurs or just slow them down so they don't make it to the pull on time. Um, I'm not sure why I waited so long to use it, but I guess it kind of worked. I guess we did uh, stop the pull, but uh, maybe we'll find a better example of that. Um, but it's something you can think about using. It's a long range spell. You can disrupt uh, pulls. Okay, so this fight right here, Lena is a little far up, and so I kind of want to go on her. So I want to start with Leech Seed so that we can see what path she's going. Once I see she's committed this way, you want to try to angle the Nature's Grasp in a way that blocks the most of her path so that um, the fastest way to walk over Nature's Grasp is directly perpendicular. Um, so you want to cast it like along the same path so she has to walk through it further or she has to change her angle. Like if she were to walk perpendicular to Nature's Grasp now, it would be towards this tree, which is towards me, and then I can punch her. Um, if not, if she wants to avoid being punched, she has to like run straight down, which is going to be more time in Nature's Grasp. It's a longer slow. So this is like an okay angle. It could have been a little bit more to the left actually though. You want to avoid putting them like directly in the center of Nature's Grasp because then that means they can just like they have half the time to walk out of it. So it's actually not that long of a slow. You want this, you see how she's a bit more on the upper edge of this nature's grass. That means there's more time she has to walk through this. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that like fully made sense, but. And this, this, this is a earlier, we didn't quite get it here, but this is where you can try to like body block that Lena in, that singular pathway. If you do a little bit of jungling, do something like this. 
make sure your nature's grasp is going through a tree and then try to come like stand in the trees as well as you jungle uh for one your passive is going to give you a little bit of extra hp regen so you're gonna well you're not gonna take less damage but you're healing more while jungling uh but two sometimes the the creeps will like bug out and they will like start moving to the right like this they'll start walking away from you through your nature's grasp but not actually hitting you and so you kind of like mess with the the uh the ai here by like stepping in and out of trees changing your angle and that can help you take less damage as you jungle uh, in this case uh these are all pretty weak so i'm just like standing there but you saw it from this creep right he started walking away because he can't get to me because i'm like in this tree and this guy's hitting me so there's no other path so now he's trying to like walk around and hit me from behind uh and then like while i don't actually want him out of nature's grasp you then just shift your angle a little bit and now he's like oh now there's space for me now he like tries to come wreck running in then you like move again he like runs back out uh, so you can make them like go back and forth without hitting you too much not always possible but sometimes so here we try to turn around because they didn't know i was here and then look at this nature's grasp angle ideally it would have been even steeper but I i'm coming in from this way so i can't you know beggars can't be choosers but you notice how i'm not placing it directly on top of marcy i'm putting it i'm t i'm trying to touch her with the edge but also leave the most amount of space that she now has to run through through this whole area whereas if i cast it on her while she's in the middle she's only having to run through this left half of the spell so it gives you the most amount of slow um sometimes you mess it up and you cast it too far and they just turn around and avoid the slow completely uh other times i don't know it works perfectly so give it a shot uh you'll get the hang of it i mean i still mess it up every now and then so i mean it's whatever but uh do your best to try to get those angles because you'll just maximize your spell that way if your offlaner has to leave for whatever reason, don't die for last hits, you know? As long as we're getting XP, this is good. And so this would be pretty risky for many supports, but for Treant, as long as I'm in these trees and they don't know, and even if they do know, as long as I'm fast enough to get back here, I won't really die. These creeps, if you want to try to keep it out of your tower, bring them to the tree line. Again, the safest place you can be. I hope that's a reoccurring theme you're getting here. Always try to be in the trees. I, I wasn't just now, but... Usually you should stand in the trees as much as possible uh, so that your passive is uh, there to save you. And I mean, not to like overdo it, like you can step out like this for last hits, just know your danger, right? I mean, if you're a normal melee hero, then you're gonna have to do this kind of risk anyways, but just know like if you can choose, Treant will be safest in the trees. You protect the trees, the trees protect you. Like this, this is a good angle. You see how from the trees, you can now, one, we're hitting the creeps now. As they walk into the tower, they're gonna continue being hit but I can also aggro them towards these trees where I can be safely in my trees. They're taking damage the whole time uh, from that nature's grasp and the nature's grasp is doing more damage because I'm casting it in the trees. See, I think here's another nature's grasp example. Yeah, so you see how as it lands, we're hitting her at the edge of nature's grasp. So now she has to walk through the full duration. If she were to change her angle to work, to walk perpendicular to the spell, it's moving towards me. Um, if she wants to keep walking straight, it's technically longer. We're, we're talking some geometry here. I'm not gonna, I actually did some videos, uh, an old video on this. Uh, maybe I'll link it, but, um, I hope you're seeing what I'm talking about with these angles. And of course it can't always be perfect, but, um, the better you can make it, the more slow you get. And then if you can, if you're going to commit your alt, alt in a way that keeps them in, over, in nature's grasp because this alt is three seconds at level one so three extra seconds of damage if you're touching trees 50 uh, 50 percent more damage so now this spell actually gets some meaningful damage whereas most people usually just walk out of it if you can actually like stun or use your own route to keep them in there and in fact when meteor hammer was better that was actually like solo threat kill um you would have nature's grasp leveled up you could nature's grasp alt into a meteor hammer and because they're taking damage the whole time that's how you actually get kills uh, you can technically do it now but meteor hammer is just not very good uh if you're giving it a go though um feel free here's another angle i'm talking about you see how we're like always like cutting along the edge of the the tower that way as they aggro towards me they're running through nature's grasp the whole time if i'm too scared to show my face at all because they're like threatening me and i'm like way back here then as these creeps move from here to the tower at least some of them will still be in nature's grass taking damage the whole time when your team pushes the tower well now we're diving the tower but at other times when you're pushing you can very safely scout this area as tree and protector because if you do see anyone teleporting you're not stuck back here like most loser supports who can't walk through trees you're a tree and protector so you get to just like go back through here or even go further in and they can't do much about it 
And then you get to do like stuff like this. As they all commit in, if you do decide to like finish the dive, you ult, you trap a lot of them. Um, if you want to get away, you could still ult potentially and then, you know, just get out. You can do things like this, cutting creep waves. Uh, you notice how I'm in the trees right now. I set the, the nature's grass at an angle where we're hitting most of the creeps. And then I walk into the trees so that as they hit me, they're all in nature's grasp, but I'm still in a tree so that I'm at the, uh, the safest place I can be. This is still risky to do because people can come and get you. Uh, but if you're ever cutting creep waves or just farming, things like that, uh, try to do something like uh, you just saw. Uh, we'll have more examples of that later. Okay, this fight, you know, they start diving over here and it's gonna take me a while to get there and I also might die in the meantime because I'm like completely exposed here. So I just go ahead and alt here, trying to trap these two from getting to this fight so that we can win the duel. And this time I'm just using the alt to control other people from getting to the fight rather than try to like alt the actual targets that are being killed right now. Um, I mean, this is the same way you can use any kind of stun, right? Whether you go on the target itself or just try to prevent other people from joining in. I think I die. Yeah, I, oh, I die. Uh, but I think my team wa will uh, clean this up. In this little skirmish, you'll see me mess up a bit. Or maybe it wasn't a mess up. You see I'm like staying in the trees in the fight because the trees keep me safe. But I now step out to a tree that's like on its own. So then I actually get stunned by Lena. I don't think she even knew I was there. I think she was hitting the Legion and it breaks my tree. So now my passive's broken. So I ult here, but I can't walk into the trees. Uh, they actually vacuum me back, but it doesn't even matter. I can't get back into the trees because I've taken damage. Uh, so you do have to be careful of that against any heroes that can break trees when you are like at the edge of little clumps like this. Um, all of your trees can get broken and then you're suddenly in a bad spot. Usually you can do things like this. Uh, they just took Aegis, so we're kind of on the back foot. My team was actually tilting out here a bit. Uh, so you can try to like split push the lanes. Um, sometimes they're not in the lane you are in, uh, but you can either try to defend like as they push, you're here, especially your team's willing to fight. Or like when they all start pushing up here, there's five heroes. You kind of give up one creep wave. Hopefully your team can like nuke out that creep wave, but you actually cut the next creep wave like back here. Again, maybe I'll have an example of that, I don't know, but I'll tell you at least now. Uh, and then usually you're fine doing stuff like this, uh, but I think, oh, I think they put a sentry just now, so they saw me, and they actually pulled me out of the trees with vacuum. So then once you're out of the trees, you are very vulnerable, that can happen to you. Uh, be a little extra careful. If you stand a little further back than where I was, uh, you'd probably be fine. You can kind of see though, even though I died, like it wasn't easy. They actually threw a lot at me because as long as you can walk through the trees, it's your best bet. I still died, but it was harder than for most other supports. Okay, here's an example actually. So you see uh, they're pushing this tower and I can't fight them here. They'll probably like kill me. This is uh, maybe not as, not as uh, far back as I'd like, but now I'm over here and I'm cutting the creep wave. And if you can see the enemy heroes, then you know, like as soon as you see them turn around, then you just walk back into the trees and hide. And it's really hard to find an invisible tree and protector in these kind of trees. Uh, now you maybe don't finish cutting the creep wave, but uh, you might still get to do something. And then uh, with the shard, it's a little challenging because they'll lose sight of you as you stay in the trees as you go invis. And as I get scared, I just walk back into the trees and you just have to like guess where they are. Sometimes you can like stick your head out. I think I do that here and I end up dying actually. Uh, they were putting a lot of sentries to catch me, but Many of your games, they may not do that much uh, and you won't feel like I am this game. If they are, I should have been better about it. Once they got me here, like you can see on the minimap, they're like putting sentries to try to catch me in the tree lines. Once the enemies start doing that, be a bit more careful than what I am in this game. Uh, but it's still not too bad to an extent, right? As long as you're not feeding too much. But like this is a sentry out here, literally just meant for me, which means they're gonna reduce their sentry supply for, um, dewarding and for scouting out your other like invis heroes if you have any so when they commit sentries just to get treant uh it's it's annoying for you but it's also not that bad for the team as a whole so long as you only you know you limit the amount of times you feed to those sentries i do something like this a lot which is i just cast nature's grasp and leech seed from fog of war and from their perspective they don't even see this happen i mean if you look at the mini map you do uh but all right like if you look here you see it um, you see all this, but if you look at the mini map when that's happening, I'm not even showing. So in your pubs, if people aren't paying attention, then this will happen where the leech seed keeps your creeps really healthy. The nature's grasp helps it push in. And then you'll have a full healthy creep wave doing a lot of tower damage like this, even without you showing. Uh, so depending on your rank, right, this, this can be very effective. 
uh, especially if you do choose to pick up that meteor hammer which is a little greedier but it's really good for split pushing you can do all of that from fog of war they'll never see it unless they're actually looking for it or they notice like wow the creeps always die really quickly and push into us um, but you know sometimes people aren't getting that far in the uh, the line of thinking uh, this team fight I don't think we wanted to team fight but they were all coming here so I tried to ult to get our team out uh, but the uh, Marcy dispose pulls our sniper back in we go for a duel oh we get him nice look at that but as soon as your team starts losing a fight and you need to like go buy time especially if you already have teleport you can come try to like split push out so I don't want to feed here but I'm waiting to see if I can cut the middle wave and Depending how good they are about uh, scouting you out while invis, I should have probably been a little safer because they've been catching me quite a lot. Um, you may not be able to get the one creep wave going through right away, but sometimes you can like throw out nature's grasp and then immediately blink away. Uh, and then they'll like spend time looking for you, but you're actually already over here. And then you're in position for the next one. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't uh, get more of these. You get one, they come look. This is why the blink is so nice, right? You can just change tree lines like this and there's no sign of it because you're invis. So they have no idea. They like see nature's grass coming from over here. They're like, he's over here. And then you're just gone. You're like into another one. You're up and down cliffs. Uh, the blink really helps you cut creep waves. When you're defending your high ground and you can try to be in these tree lines, that helps a lot. You know, you can, this is actually not the best angle, but you can usually throw out your nature's grasp in a way that kind of like cuts off this path. So when carries do things like this and come in really deep and the team wants to follow up, they have to run through your nature's grasp. It's kind of like running through invoker ice wall. It's a huge pain. Um, and it can buy you a couple seconds to kill off a hero that's too far ahead. Uh, I kind of wanted to not alter here because she had Aegis, but I didn't want her to kill my sniper either. So there you can see we're disabling her through BKB. Now she doesn't have BKB. She's in pretty far. And we're kind of like wiping them here. Nice. Look at us go. So something I ended up doing a lot this game because my team was kind of tilting out and I was trying to buy time was split push like this. Just throw out nature's grasp a lot. You see, I took the talents for it as well. Uh, so I'm just constantly throwing this out. And as soon as I see people rotate in, I want to uh, play it safe. Potentially, you can then like, uh, let's say we see someone TP in here. We can then go TP top and try to make it play up here because we know someone rotated down here. Otherwise, you just back off wait for them and see what they do. If you have any vision down, it helps a lot. But now I see them leave, so I know I'm safe. So I'm just gonna start intercepting this next creep wave and try to bait them in here, especially if you want to buy time for your team. Then they see a treant, they wanna go get him, and then you like walk away, you blink away, very safe back here. I see what happens if they show up again, you know, kind of just repeat, decide. Like, do we wanna fight here and you all wanna come? Then that's fine. Otherwise, I'll just wait for them to back off. I'll throw it in nature's grasp so they know I'm here and they wanna get me but I'm always like playing it safe, staying in the tree lines, and you're just gonna buy a lot of time doing this. Oh, be careful you don't get your couriers killed when like cutting the creep wave here and they like reveal where you are walking through the jungle. Um, I recommend shift clicking your courier down the side of the tree line, like down here, and then shift click it to you from there. So it'll like make a little L shape and then you can send it back the same way. Click it here, then shift send home. Uh, that way it does like a little L path. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing it here, right? So your couriers don't die and kind of reveal where you're where you're going. So here's another example of where I'm gonna nature's grasp and leech seed a lot to keep this creep wave super healthy to build up a big wave. Uh, so you can see, I still have literally the whole creep wave alive. We're gonna go to the next one and I'm gonna do it again. And you gotta be careful of these, uh, these little healing pulses following you around, showing where you are. I think the whole creep wave is still alive at this point. We're gonna keep going, do it again, and then like start playing it safe when, uh, you know, you can't do it too many times. But now we've essentially kept like two creep waves alive and someone has to respond to this. So in a sense, we're pushing farm to them, but it's a bit of give and take. We are baiting someone down here or we're getting tower damage. And if someone comes down here, that's what I said earlier, right? You can come up and fight somewhere up here because we know someone teleported down here. And if you're pushing in full creep waves and a core is farming full creep waves, but they can't leave bottom because you keep shoving things in, that's pretty good for you. So it looks like I am going for that first option where I saw Beastmaster come in and I teamed up here and tried to get things done with my team. Didn't quite find anyone, but took a little bit of control back of our own jungle. I forgot I got an Ags in this game, so let's do some Ags tips. So I highly recommend you have at least one tree in Roche because the tree actually sees into Roche. So then if, even if you're really bad at timing Roche, uh, you'll know exactly when it spawns. I also recommend trying to get trees along the, the lane. So that way you don't have to time it 
for this. Like, you're going to use your ult when you need to in team fights, but by chance you might get lucky and your ult might hit several creep waves, for example, and that really helps to get the lane pushing in your favor. Whether you win the fight or lose the fight, that is good, because if you win the fight, it means you can push down the lanes faster, and if you lose the fight, it means they have to wait longer for creep waves to come in because you just killed the ones behind them. Other really good spots, as you fill in some common spots along the lane, like this kind of tree is good, and any kind of like good vision, anything that sees on the high ground, because you'll get those, like if you get this tree, you'll see this part. Any of these like multi-path uh, intersections are good. And if you can like work that in with a camp as well, that helps too, because then as you ult, you'll just do a little bit of farming. Try to prioritize the enemy side rather than your side for that, because you don't want to just steal all of your own team's farm. Uh, but you want to steal the enemy's team's farm. So somewhere like right here is really nice. It'll hit two camps. It'll also reveal when they're being farmed by the enemies. Uh, somewhere like over here can be nice because uh, you get this nice pathway. You see this. Or you can do something like this tree, which will allow you to farm this camp and see this pathway. Uh, there's tons of examples, tons of trees. Uh, any of them will work. And then as the game goes longer and longer, you can then uh, just place more and more. And you'll probably need to buy a couple clarities. Even into the late game, you will burn through mana using this off cooldown. So buy a couple clarities if you ever do pick up an Ags. And notice in this high ground push, again, I am sitting in the back. I'm just waiting as a counter initiator. I'm just going to help Sniper. When he gets gone on, I will blink ult. I'm actually a little further up than I should be. I am literally telling you guys to be a backline player. And then I'm like up front here. Um, okay, now we're back here. This is this is better. You know, a little further back behind the sniper. I could honestly be a little further back because of vacuum. So I'm, I'm actually kind of close. Wow, what am I doing? So bad. I literally just walk in. Lol. <laughs> Blink was canceled. I just walked in. This is why you're supposed to be far back and just like protecting him. Yeah, okay, we win. It's all right. It's, well, you know, we don't have to play perfectly. But uh, I think I should be further back there uh, to help uh, help Sniper, but not get caught in the same like vacuum stun stuff like that. You know, so Sniper standing here, I probably could be like back here because that's close enough to like blink in to help him. I think I was a little close because I was like thinking of blinking to help my team. But with the power of hindsight in this video, you know, I don't need to do that. I just help the Sniper a bit more. Although actually, I think what I was thinking is Legion was doing a lot of damage this game. She's the one that tilted out, but I mean, she's super farmed and like very very high damage. So I think I was helping her more than the sniper this game. All right, let's stop here. Uh, let me know if this was helpful, kind of just showing like tips and tricks, little bits and pieces here and there of gameplay, not running through like a complete game, but maybe a couple different games. Uh, this one, I think we only did two, but if you do like this, I can uh, do this for other future support spotlights rather than do a complete game. Uh, or if you prefer the whole game so you can see the uh, complete buildup uh, that works too, let me know which ones you prefer. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video.